Good morning, good evening. This is Dr. Wakaguyu Wakiburi. And today we are going to talk about something totally different. This is going to be a totally different video. It's unlike any other video that you have listened to. Who is Dr. Wakagui Wakiburi? Dr. Wakagui Wakiburi is a tax consultant. That is what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. I sort out taxpayers' problems. What else do I do? I am a tax teacher. You had light. I am a tax teacher. I teach tax and I love teaching tax. I have taught tax at the university level. I have taught for Kenya School of Revenue Administration, the tax school that is owned by Kenya Revenue Authority. And I've also taught tax elsewhere. I've also uh, done a lot of tax trainings, uh, conducted seminars, facilitated uh, a lot of trainings. The other thing that I do is I am a commercial mediator and I specialize in tax. So that's the third thing I do. The fourth thing that I do is I write about tax. I have been writing books about tax. I also write a blog, taxkenya.com, about tax. So basically, my life revolves around tax. I sleep tax, I walk tax, I breathe tax, and I eat tax. Me and tax, we are one and the same thing. But today, we are going to talk about my writing about tax. And I'm going to restrict myself to writing of books, not any other writing. Not writing of blog posts, not lighting of tax articles, but lighting of books. Have I written books? Yes. I have written 10 tax books and 13 question volumes. And all those questions are tax questions. I know someone is asking, Kenyans don't read. Why did you write the books? I have the answer to your questions. Kenyans lead. Because of course we are so many students who are in high school, at the universities, there are so many students and they read. Kenyans read, but they read necessary things, things that they require. Kenyans don't read for Asia, but they read things that they require. And Kenyans read about tax because they know at least on the bare minimum, 30% of their earnings will go to the government. So if you know that 30% of your earnings will go to the government, the best thing that you can do is to make sure that you have the necessary information as far as tax is concerned. It makes common sense for you to learn about tax. So I write my books for students, taxpayers, and also tax professionals. Why did I write the tax books? I have several reasons why I wrote the tax books. Number one, I remember the words of the late Myers Monroe, and this is what he said. If you go to the cemeteries, you will find a lot of wealth stored there. Books that were not written, songs that were not sung, innovations, things that would have changed the world. I did not want to be one of those people. I decided whatever I have, whatever I know, it doesn't help me if I don't share with other people. I wrote the books to share what I know about tax with other people. I did not like the books only for Kenyans. I wrote the books to share with the world. 
Kenya is a member of the Commonwealth and the tax systems in Commonwealth countries are more or less similar. The world has become a global village. Look at the East African community. Democratic Republic of Congo, that is Congo DRC, is coming on board. This means that the East African community is going to be very big from the eastern coast of Africa to the western coast of Africa. Our tax systems in the East African community are more or less the same. So some of the books that I have written can be used not only in Kenya, they can be used in the East African community and also across the globe. So the first reason for lighting the books was to share what I know with others. The other reason why I wrote the tax books is because there are very few locally written tax books. Most of the books that are being used even in our local universities are not written in this country. Our economic environment is totally different from where those particular books were written. Majority of our students are going to work in this country and therefore it makes sense for them to use materials that are developed locally. The other reason why I wrote the tax books is because I love tax. You cannot write those many books unless you love the subject. There is something about tax I love. I have told my students time and time again, if you want to learn tax, if you want to become a tax expert, and not only tax, even in any other subject, fall in love with the subject. That is the only way you can become an expert in that particular subject. I fell in love with the subject when I was first taught. It is not normal that someone wakes up and they start writing about tax. They don't write one book, they write several books. I know many people hate tax and I do understand why they hate tax. People hate tax because they don't understand. Number one, they don't understand what tax is. And number two, they do not understand the purpose of tax. One of the other reasons why I really wanted to write these books is because I wanted to change people's perspectives about tax. I wanted people to understand what tax is. You know, demystify the whole subject. So, the subject of today's video is tax books authored by Dr. Wakaguyu Wakebori. So, how many books have I written? How many tax books have I written? I have written 10 tax books and 13 tax question volumes. I'll explain. Now, which are the tax books that I've written? The first tax book, I'll just, uh, I'll just mention the titles and then we'll go into the books and then I will explain I'll explain what the books are all about later. Now the first tax book that I've written is Church, Money and Tax 10 Steps to Improve Tax Compliance. The second book is How to Manage a Tax Audit Process. The third book is How to Manage a Tax Interview. The fourth book is How to Minimize Tax-Related Stress. The fifth book is How to Prepare for Tax Audit, Six Steps. Number six is Installment Tax. Number seven is Let Us Learn Tax, Your Business and Domestic Taxes in Kenya. Number eight, is strategies to minimize extra tax payments. Number nine is turnover tax in Kenya. And number 10 is value added tax in Kenya, explained with worked examples. So those are the 10 tax books. And let us look at what do they contain. I'll only discuss the contents in the table of content 
And if you want to learn more, you can purchase any of the books. I will leave the links of the book jobs in the description of this video. Please note we are not discussing the books in the order that they were published or order of importance. We are just discussing the tax books. There is no single book that is more important than the other. All books tackle different subjects and all those subjects are important. Those subjects form the whole of the tax subject. So the first book is Church, Money and Tax, 10 Steps to Improve Tax Compliance. From the title, you, the title can tell you that the book is a targeted book. This book was written uh, to clear the misconception that uh, churches and other religious organizations are tax exempt. That is not true. Churches and other religious organizations are supposed to be following the tax law. That is, they are supposed to be abiding with the tax laws because there are some specific activities that they undertake away from the core business of churches and religious organizations. And those particular activities attract tax. Therefore, it is important for the churches and other religious organizations to know which particular activities that they engage in attract tax and what is it that they need to do so that they can improve their tax compliance. Complying with the tax law is very important for the churches because most churches do not have extra finances to pay the extra tax penalties, tax interest, and tax fines. They would need to request the members to make contributions so that they can make the extra tax payments. The, the church members may not be very happy with such a scenario, and they may even start asking or questioning the integrity of the church management. This book has four chapters. The first chapter is Introduction to Church, Money, and Tax. The second chapter is about money received by the church. The third chapter is Taxation of Church Money. And the fourth chapter is Steps to Improve Tax Compliance. And I've given 10 steps to improve tax compliance. So the book is about the money the church receives and the money that gets out of the church. Some of the money that is received by the church is subject to taxation, whereas some of the money is not subject to taxation. Some of the money that goes out of the church is subject to taxation, whereas some of the money is not subject to taxation. The churches are basically subject to three uh, types of taxes, domestic taxes, value-added tax, income tax, and sometimes excess duty if they engage in activities where they transact in products, uh, that is goods or services, that are subject to excess duty. The 10 steps to improve uh, tax compliance by the churches will go a wrong way in assisting the churches improve tax compliance. So I would urge anybody who reads the book not only to read but also to implement the recommendations so that the churches can improve tax compliance. That is all about the first book, Church, Money and Tax, 10 Steps to Improve Tax Compliance. The title of the second book is 
how to manage a tax audit process. A tax audit is a process. It starts somewhere and it ends somewhere. So this book is about managing that whole process. It is important to note that an audit process does not start when the tax officers pay a visit to a taxpayer to commence examination of tax records and documents. In fact, the tax audit process starts when a person becomes a registered taxpayer. This is because most of what the taxpayer will do is going to be audited at one time or the other. Over the many years that I have been a tax consultant, and I also observed this when I was a tax officer, many taxpayers are never ready for a tax audit. And the reason why they are never ready for a tax audit is because they do not prepare. They do not know what to do. They don't know when to do it and they do not know when to commence the preparations. But common sense dictates that if you are expecting a visitor, you must always be ready. Every taxpayer knows that at one time or the other, there is a very high possibility that they will be subjected to a tax audit by the tax authority. And therefore, they need to prepare continuously for that day when the tax officers will knock at their door leading to undertake a tax audit. What does the book contain? The book contains several chapters. There are 10 chapters and the first chapter explains what tax audits are. The book also explains the three types of audits. That is the desk, the field, and a mixture of desk and field audits. After introduction to tax audits, the next subject that is covered is the triggers of tax audits. And there we have two types of triggers of tax audits. There are general triggers of tax audits and specific triggers of tax audits. Under general triggers of tax audits, we have internal and external. And for specific tax audit triggers, those are specific to the tax type. For example, the VAT, pay as you want, corporate tax. We have specific triggers for those types of tax audits. After the triggers, we have the management of the tax audit process. Here, we start with the introduction to managing tax audit process. And then we cover managing the tax audit exercise before commencement of the actual tax audit exercise. Then we cover managing the tax audit process during the tax audit exercise. And thereafter, we cover managing the tax audit process after the tax audit exercise. So in a nutshell, this book has 10 chapters and the first chapter that is chapter one is what are tax audits chapter two general internal tax audit triggers chapter three general external tax audit triggers chapter four tax audit triggers value added tax chapter five tax audit triggers uh, pay as you want chapter six tax audit triggers corporate income tax chapter seven Managing Tax Audit Process, Chapter 8, Managing the Tax Audit Process Before the Actual Tax Audit Exercise, Chapter 9, Managing the Tax Audit Process During the Tax Audit Exercise, and Chapter 10, Managing the Tax Audit Process After the Tax Audit Exercise. So those are the 10 chapters that are in the book titled How to Manage a Tax Audit Process.
The third book is titled How to Manage a Tax Interview. This book has various sections. We can group the various sections into five chapters. The first section is 1.1 uh, and it is on introduction to interview or, or the subject matter of the book and it talks about uh, what an interview is, where it is conducted from, who conducts the interview, why the interview is important. So that is what is addressed in the introduction. In uh, the second section, that is 1.2, it talks about the actual interview, what actually happens during the actual interview that is when the tax officers meet with the the taxpayers or even if it is over the phone then uh, the third section 1.3 it talks about the general questions that are asked during a tax interview a tax interview is about asking questions asking the taxpayers questions because the tax officers want to learn more about the business as they prepare to examine the tax records to find out whether the taxpayer has been complying with the tax laws. In this book, the tax interview, we have covered over 100 questions that may be asked during a tax interview. And that is why 1.3 is about general questions that may be asked. These are questions about anything. In fact, the tax officers can even ask about football. They can even ask you about politics. They can ask you about anything. We have also given the reasons why they ask those questions. They are preparing you as the taxpayer you know, for the for the tax interview. So they are preparing you. So they don't just come in and they start asking you questions. No, they have to prepare you. Then 1.4 is about the specific questions and the specific questions are about the various tax systems. 1.41 it's about value added tax questions. And the value added tax questions, they ask you questions about sales, they ask you questions about purchases, they ask you questions about withholding value added tax and they also ask you questions about imported services. That is the value added tax on imported services. Under 1.42, that is on pay as you earn, they ask you questions about employment position. That is for the employees and also the directors. Under 1.43, they ask you questions regarding withholding income tax. And under withholding income tax, they ask you questions about the company shareholders and the service providers. Under 1.44, they ask you questions about corporate income tax and under corporate income tax, they will basically be asking you about the purchases and also the sales. They'll ask you about who are your suppliers, you know, who you sell to and other questions. Under 1.45, they'll ask you questions about anything else that is related to tax. Under 1.46, they can ask you questions about domestic excess duty, that is if there are any products that you sell and they are subject to domestic excess duty. Under 1.47, they ask you about customs taxes and here they'll ask you about imports and exports. Under 1.5, we have covered what to do after the tax interview is over, what the tax officers will do, and what the taxpayers will do. So that is all that is covered under this book titled How to Manage a Tax Interview. Someone may be asking, why would you write a book about a tax interview? Why I wrote this book is because over time I realized that many taxpayers and even tax professionals do not understand the value of a tax interview. A tax interview is very important because it determines very many things once the tax interview is conducted. A tax interview is about looking for information. 
the tax officers are looking for specific information. It is from the tax interview that they determine several things. Number one, whether they got the answers they were looking for. Number two is whether they will commence a tax audit. Number three, it will determine the extent and the depth of the tax audit. Number four, it will determine whether there are any tax assessments that are going to be levied. Number six, sometimes it can even determine whether there is going to be prosecution of the tax payer or not. So that is all about the book titled How to Manage a Tax Interview. That was book number three. Book number four is titled How to Minimize Tax Related Stress. This book has five chapters. Before we go to the chapters, I know the question is why did you write this book? Why I wrote this book is because over time, as a tax consultant and also when I was a tax officer, I realized that very many people suffer from tax-related stress. There are some people who have developed illnesses due to tax-related stress. The objective of writing this book was and still is is to assist taxpayers to minimize tax related stress because it is good for their health the health of their families and also tax collection so the first part is on the introduction about what is stress what tax related stress is and all things about stress. Chapter 1 is specifically about what stress is. And we have defined tax related stress. In chapter 1, we have also explained when tax related stress is experienced. We have also explained why people experience tax related stress. In chapter 2, we have explained the various types of stress. These are general tax related stress and the specific tax related stress. In chapter 3, in chapter 3, we have explained general tax related stress. We have also talked about the sources of specific tax related stress. In chapter 4, we have addressed the consequences of tax related stress and these are consequences to the taxpayer as an individual, to the business and also to the tax itself. In chapter 5, we have addressed the strategies to minimize tax related stress. We have addressed strategies by the taxpayers, strategies by the tax authority, and strategies by the government. So this book has five chapters, and it talks about the whole subject of tax-related stress so that taxpayers can minimize their levels of tax-related stress. We are aware it is not Possible sometimes to completely do away with tax related stress. It will still be there, but what we are advocating is managing the tax related stress. Book number five is titled how to prepare for a tax audit, six steps. This is a different book from the book titled How to Manage a Tax Audit Process. 
This book is about how to prepare, not how to manage. A tax audit. Now, why did I write this book? I wrote this book because I realized over time that taxpayers do not prepare adequately for a tax audit. In this book, there are six steps. Any taxpayer who goes through these six steps, implements the six steps, they will be ready for any tax audit by the tax authority. What happens is that because many taxpayers are not ready for tax audits, they waste a lot of time because they are never ready. Even the tax professionals, most of them, they are never ready to handle a tax audit. So in this book, we have three chapters. And the first one, the first chapter is about the introduction to the preparation of tax audits. Chapter two is about the steps to prepare for a tax audit. There are the six steps. The first step is to prepare the tax records and documents. The second step is to undertake a tax health check. The third step is to make tax payment arrangements with the tax authority. The fourth step is to make tax payments established during the tax health check. The fifth step is to prepare for a tax interview. And the sixth step is to get ready for a tax audit notification. Chapter three is about conclusion. So once a taxpayer goes through this book or a tax uh, professional goes through this book, they will be able to prepare for any tax audit. In fact, sometimes they can even talk to the tax authority and request for a tax audit. Book number six is titled Installment Tax. Why did I write this book? The reason I wrote this book is because many taxpayers do not know that they are required to pay tax on installment basis. For any year of income, a taxpayer does not have to wait until the end of the year of income to establish the amount of tax they are supposed to pay and pay the income tax. Every taxpayer is expected to progressively pay their income tax within the year of income. But what we find is that many taxpayers do not do that. So I pulled out the information on installment tax so that once a taxpayer goes through this particular book, it will inform them that it will inform them they are supposed to pay income tax on installment basis. It will inform them how to establish those particular installments and how to make the payments. Failure to pay income tax on installment tax attracts penalties and interests. And of course, that is extra tax payment. The book has various sections. And the first section is introduction. The book introduces installment tax. It also introduces the year of income and also the legal basis for installment tax. The second part of the book talks about who is eligible to pay installment tax. The third section addresses installment tax estimation methods. Installment tax is estimated tax. And the third section talks about the two methods that one can use to estimate the amount of installment tax to pay, also the number of installment tax to pay, the amount of installment tax to pay, and the date when the installment tax is paid. The book also talks about where the installment tax is paid. 
It talks about the balance of tax and the consequences of non-compliance. Plus, it also talks about the penalties and interests. If one does not comply with paying income tax on installment basis. That is all about the book titled Installment Tax in Kenya Simplified. Book number seven is titled, Let Us Learn Tax, Your Business and Domestic Taxes in Kenya. This book covers everything about domestic taxes in Kenya. Let me qualify the everything. It covers allowed 80% of everything that you need to know about domestic taxes in Kenya. So if one does not want to buy the other books, one can buy this book because it's going to give them an insight into domestic taxes in Kenya. The book has various parts. It has various parts. It's quite, it's a lengthy book. It has various parts. The book has information on the tax industry in Kenya. The book also has an introduction on why you should pay tax. It also has a a section on players in the tax relationship in Kenya and it also informs you why you need to seek for tax information. The second part is about the value added tax in Kenya and it covers the various sections. The various sections, it covers value added tax on local supplies, on imported services and also on withholding value added tax. The book also examines income tax that is pay as you want, installment tax, withholding income tax, and corporate income tax, plus also turnover tax. The book also covers a taxation of rental income, that is for commercial and residential, capital gains tax, and personal income tax. So the book covers everything. There is to know about a tax or domestic taxes in Kenya. If you go through this book, you will know approximately between 70 and 80 percent of the tax of tax in Kenya. As I said, I do not intend to make you an expert. What I intend to do is to make you appreciate what you are supposed to do and what there is to be done. Once you do that, then you can be able to ask questions and relevant questions and you'll be expecting answers. Let us move on. The eighth book or book number eight is Strategies to Minimize Extra Tax Payments. I know someone is asking, why would you write such a book? Is it not illegal to tell people how to minimize extra tax payments? The book tells you about how to minimize extra tax payments, not the correct amount of tax that you're supposed to be paying. And there's nothing illegal about that. We are simply telling you, Please do not pay any extra taxes that you are not supposed to pay. We are not telling you to break the law. We do not advise anybody to break the law. Breaking the tax law is a short-term measure, but it has long-term consequences. Because one day, you just may be caught. And when you are caught, you face the consequences. And you are going to face the consequences alone. I know this very well because I'm a tax consultant and I was a tax officer at one time. But it pains me to find a taxpayer 
giving away their money to the government. Giving away the operating capital to the government. The government does not want your operating capital. The government wants you to pay only the amount of tax you are supposed to pay and nothing else. It is not the government's joy to take away your operating capital because the government knows one thing. The government requires you to operate your business, make profits so that you can pay more tax. So if your operating capital is taken away, how are you going to operate your business? Where will the government collect tax from tomorrow? The government does not have rewards for people who pay extra taxes that are not required. The government will give you a reward if you pay the collect amount of tax that you're supposed to pay, not giving it your operating capital. So this book has various sections. Under 1.1.1, the book explains what extra tax payments are. And these extra tax payments we are talking about are penalties, we are talking about interest, we are talking about fines, we are talking about mistakes that people make and end up paying extra taxes. Under 1.1, it is the introduction and the extra tax payments are introduced and the reasons for the extra tax payments. Under 1.2, the book examines the various consequences of the extra tax payments. These are consequences to individual taxpayers, to the business and to the tax itself. Under 1.3, the book addresses the sources of money to pay the extra tax payments. Under 1.4, the book addresses the various strategies to minimize the extra tax payments. These are the general strategies and the specific strategies. The, gen the specific strategies to pay as you want, value added tax, withholding income tax, installment tax, corporate tax, and other types of tax systems. So that is all the book has addressed. The book has addressed the extra tax payments from each and every domestic tax system and what a taxpayer should do so that they don't pay the extra tax payments or the additional taxes. Book number nine is titled Turnover Tax in Kenya Simplified with Worked Examples. We know that there are some specific taxpayers who pay income tax and a turnover tax in Kenya. This is a simplified method of paying income tax in Kenya. Turnover tax is not a type of tax or a system of tax. It is simply a method of paying income tax from businesses that do not have very high turnover in a year of income. This book has 14 good chapters and the first chapter is Introduction to Turnover Tax. The second chapter covers the reasons for introducing the tax system in Kenya. Not all businesses are subject to turnover tax. Therefore, the third chapter, chapter three, covers the businesses that are subject to turnover tax in Kenya. Not every business that is required to pay income tax under this method, even though their turnover may be low. Therefore, chapter four is on the businesses that are exempted from turnover tax. The fifth chapter is on the tax period for the turnover tax. The sixth chapter is on the turnover tax taxable amount. Chapter seven is on the turnover tax rate. Chapter 8 is the deductible expenses under turnover tax. 
Chapter 9 is on turnover tax due date. Chapter 10 is on turnover tax returns. Chapter 11 is on how to pay the turnover tax. Chapter 12 is turnover tax records. Those are records and documents to maintain. Chapter 13 is on turnover tax as a final tax and chapter 14 is the consequences of not complying with turnover tax. The question is why did I write this particular book on turnover tax in Kenya? Why I wrote this book is to help taxpayers who fall under this system of paying income tax comply with the tax law minimize chances of paying extra tax payments and minimize their tax related stress majority of the taxpayers who are required to pay income tax under this method have small and medium sized businesses most of the taxpayers Their tax returns levels are very low. In fact, some of them have never been to school. So these are people who need help. And that is why the government came up with this specific way or method of paying income tax. The next book that is book number 10 is value added tax in Kenya explained with worked examples. I forgot to mention most of my books have worked examples. I give examples of exactly what I am talking about. So I explain the concept using a local example. So value added tax in Kenya. Value added tax is one of the tax systems that are used in Kenya by the government to collect consumption taxes. This book has many pages, but it covers more or less everything about value added tax plus extra. It the book has 21 chapters. The first chapter is the introduction. Chapter 2 is interpretation of value added tax terms. The interpretation of the terms in the act is how the terms are interpreted and applied. The interpretation is given because in our day to day normal conversations the way we understand sometimes they do not mean the same thing as far as taxation is concerned many people because they don't understand the interpretation of the terms they misinterpret the terms and they end up paying extra taxes because of that it is important to know the correct tax interpretation of a certain term because that can save you a lot of money always remember that in our day to day conversations the way we interpret some words it is not the way or sometimes it is not the way they are interpreted tax wise there's a whole list of the terms and the interpretations chapter 3 addresses value added tax registration This is about the qualifications. What businesses qualify? What turnovers qualify? And for how long should the person have been in the business? The chapter also addresses the consequences of failure to deregister, that is the penalties, the interest and the fines. Chapter 4 addresses value added tax deregistration the same way you are registered you can be deregistered the law allows for deregistration and this chapter 
addresses the conditions for deregistration plus the consequences of failure to deregister. Chapter 5 is about imposition of value added tax. Where is it levied? And then chapter 6 is charged to value added tax on what particular goods and services is value added tax charged. Chapter 7 is on the place of supply of goods and services. This is as far as application of VAT is concerned. We have two places, that is the domestic market, that is the local and imported. The place where a supply takes place is very, very important because it determines very many things. For example, it determines the VAT rate. Chapter 8 is about time of supply of goods and services. Value added tax is levied for a particular month and that is why time of supply is very important. Value added tax is levied and reported for a particular month and that is why time of supply is very important. Chapter 10 is on computation of output value added tax. It is actually about the tax rate and the base on which the rate is applied. Chapter 11 is value added tax on imported goods. Who handles that? It is the customs department, not the domestic taxes department. Chapter 11 is on input value added tax, that is the value added tax on purchases. The purchases are domestic and imported. Uh, chapter 12 is on relief of value added tax. On registration, a taxpayer may have goods in stock and they had paid VAT on those goods. The taxpayer is given relief so that they can be able to utilize that input which they had already paid before they were registered for VAT. Chapter 13 is on deferred or value added tax. There are some particular goods that uh, when you purchase, then you pay the value added tax. You are supposed to be deferred that value added tax. How does one go about being refunded the money. Chapter 13 explains how one is refunded the money. Chapter 14 is on information technology in value added tax administration. How is the government using information technology for purposes of administration of value added tax? As a taxpayer, what are you expected to know as far as using information technology is concerned. As a tax student, what are you supposed to know? As a tax professional, what are you expected to know? Chapter 15 explains value added tax returns. If you don't file a return, there's a penalty of 10,000. Chapter 16 is about value added tax assessments. There are basically three types of assessments. We have the original assessment, the default assessment when a taxpayer does not file a VAT return, and an amended assessment. Chapter 17 is about the offenses under value added tax. There are very many activities that are considered offenses under the value added tax. Chapter 18 talks about the various penalties. Apart from the normal penalties that we know, for example, not limiting money on time, there are very many other penalties. This chapter addresses the other penalties. But what other penalties? There are more than 10 types of penalties imposed under the value added tax. Every taxpayer must familiarize themselves with these penalties because they are applied on taxpayers. For example, if you are summoned by the commissioner to appear, if you do not go, there is a penalty. If you are asked to produce books, 
and records. If you don't, there there's a penalty. Chapter 19 talks about collection of tax, that is the collection of VAT. When is it collected and who collects the value added tax? Chapter 20 talks about objecting a value added tax debt. Some of this information is not necessarily from the Value Added Tax Act, it is from the Tax Procedures Act. It is very important for every taxpayer to know how to object to a VAT debt, to a tax debt, because there are consequences. If you don't do it properly, you may end up paying tax, which you are not supposed to pay. Chapter 21 talks about the appeals. When you feel aggrieved because of value-added tax debt, what do you need to do? What is the process? Chapter 21 gives the guidance on exactly what you need to do from lodging an appeal at the tax tribunal to the High Court and also Court of Appeal. So this book has 21 chapters and in those 21 chapters the book talks specifically about value added tax value added tax is one of the very important tax systems and the government is collecting a lot of money that money is collected by individuals you realize that at a value added tax you give the money to someone else to go and pay on your behalf that someone else, that is the taxpayer who is registered for value added tax, they have obligations. And because of those obligations, that is why it is very important for them to learn about value added tax. Very many taxpayers have suffered immensely because they did not know about value added tax. Why did I write the book? I wrote the book because very many people suffer every single day because they don't know what they are supposed to do and they are simple things for example the return for value added tax the tax return is supposed to be filed by 20th of the following month you don't have to wait until the 20th of the following month you can file the return on first second third all the way to 20th and because there is a time lag between the end of the tax period and when you're supposed to file the returns, many people use the money. When they are filing the tax returns, they have no money to pay the tax. What are they supposed to do? They are expected to have a plan of how they are going to pay the tax. That is all about the 10 tax books that I have written. And if I may go through the list of the titles again. The first tax book is Charge, Money and Tax, 10 Steps to Improve Tax Compliance. The second book is titled How to Manage a Tax Audit Process. The third book is titled How to Manage a Tax Interview. The fourth book is titled How to Minimize Tax Related Stress. The fifth book is titled How to Prepare for a Tax Audit, Six Steps. The sixth book is titled Installment Tax in Kenya, Simplified. The seventh book is titled let us learn tax, your business and domestic taxes in Kenya. The eighth book is titled Strategies to Minimize Extra Tax Payments. The ninth book is titled Turnover Tax in Kenya. And the tenth book is titled Value Added Tax in Kenya, Explained with Worked Examples.
I have explained why I wrote the 10 tax books. If I can summarize the reasons, the first one is to assist taxpayers improve their tax compliance levels. Number two is to assist taxpayers learn about, about the tax systems and minimize their chances of paying extra taxes. And number three is to assist taxpayers minimize tax-related stress. It is not enough to read the books. One must do more than that. The leaders, that is the tax students, tax professionals, and the taxpayers also need to implement or to ensure that what they have learned is implemented. These books will help taxpayers, tax students, and tax professionals. It is true, many people or many taxpayers fall into problems because they don't have the necessary tax knowledge. It is important to seek for the necessary information. It doesn't cost a lot. If you compare the costs of not complying with the tax law and the cost of seeking for the necessary tax information, you cannot compare the two. And apart from the books, I also mentioned that there are tax question volumes that I have written. And these are 13. Let us quickly go through the titles. We will not go through the nitty gritties of what the volumes contain. The answers were not deliberately provided. We did not want to replicate the classroom scenario. If you have the question and you have the answers, it's like being in a classroom. There's a question and the answers. The questions are not going to be marked and there are no marks that are going to be awarded. The questions are basically to enable the leader understand the contents. Go through the questions, then read the book, go through the questions so that you can be able to understand. You need to understand. The most important thing is to understand and apply what you have learned. The volumes are in seven categories. The categories are value added tax. We have five volumes. The first one is volume one and it has more than 100 questions. Volume two, three, four, five, they all have 100 questions. That means in total, we have more than 500 questions and a value added tax. The second category is pay as you earn and under this we have only one volume with 100 questions. The other category is a turnover tax and here we have only one volume and there are 50 questions. The other category is corporate tax and under this we have only one volume with 100 questions. The other category is installment tax and here we have only one volume with 100 questions. The other category is capital gains tax. We have only one volume of 100 questions. The other category is international taxation and for this we have three volumes and each volume has 100 tax questions. So in total we have seven categories and more than a thousand tax questions. 
If you go through all these questions, that is more than a thousand questions, and you read the books, you are going to learn a lot of tax. You are actually going to become an expert. You will surprise yourself by the amount of tax that you know. The next question is, where can you get the books? We sell the books in three locations, in our two of our websites and in Amazon. Our websites are books.taxkenya.com and the second bookshop is jagokingdombooks.com and the third bookstore is amazon.com. You will find the books in all those three locations. Once again, the purpose of this video was for me introduce the books that I have written, explaining the reasons why I wrote the books and the contents of the tax books. I've just gone through the table of content, a quick summary of what the books contain. So there you have it. You know who Dr. Wakaguyu Wakiburi is as an author, what she has done, and the motivation for doing it. For anyone out there who would want to write a book, I am available to motivate and mentor upcoming writers. You can also invite me for a chat and we can discuss your book idea. If you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. Leave a comment and also like the video. You can write to us and tell us what other book you would want us to write. We are open to new ideas.